Alright guys, I'm going to show you guys how my network is laid out. Um, if you're interested in any of the hardware or software, uh, you want to check the link in the description below. It's going to link you to my website. I have a lot of the hardware and software linked and just a lot of information that might be helpful. So, this is my modem. It's a surfboard SB6120. Uh, it supports the DOCSIS 3.0, so I believe it can go up to 300 megabits per second. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, that has gigabit come out and go to my my firewall and router which I built um, just from scratch just uh, computer parts so essentially this is replacing um, like a plastic Linksys router you would buy at a store um, it's just a full-on computer with two uh, network cards in it uh, the motherboard I bought actually has two Intel network cards in it just normally it's a server motherboard but um, you can use anything and just throw in network cards so, uh, this is running what a normal router would run, which is DHCP, so that gives everyone a network um, IP addresses. It's running DNS, which uh, helps resolve host names uh, for the people in the network. It's also running uh, NAT, which opens up ports um, for people in the network. And it's running a bunch of other services, which I will go into in a little bit. Um, this has gigabit leave uh, exit and go to my, the rest of my network through this switch. So this switch slits off to all the other servers in this area. And two of the lines actually go out. One goes here, which um, you'll see in the kitchen, but goes back to my um, housemate's room. Another one, there's three black cables down there that continue on. Two of those are USB, and one is gigabit Ethernet. So I don't know if you can see, it's pretty dark. But if you just follow that cable, it's around 200 feet long, I believe. But gigabit or Ethernet can go. 300 plus if it's a um, cat 5 e cable so yeah we have a little hub over there and the two wires I showed are actually redirected there the one that was originally that black ethernet continues on through here and eventually gets to this gigabit switch down here which kinda hard to see but yeah, there's uh, four things plugged into here, though. The one internal gigabit port. This is gigabit. It goes to my home theater, but it's it's suspended right now, so it thinks it's 100. This is my um, wireless access point, which is only 100. And then after that, there's a, um, an Xbox 360, which also connects at only 100. But yeah, here's my wireless access point. Um, it has 100 megabit per second going in. It also has power. This can be powered by Ethernet if you have a power on. Um, power by ethernet uh, switch but I don't so I bought a power adapter for it for 15 bucks from eBay um, so essentially this is a Cisco um, 1131AG so it has dual band capabilities I am running um, I'm running a network on the A band and the G band so 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz um, it has extremely good range it's very stable it was a lot harder to set up than DDWRT, just this, the settings itself. I mean, um, I have links in my description, or I have a link in my description which might help you um, if you want to set one of these up to get like you know WPA on it and stuff. So yeah, that's uh, I really recommend this router if you can get it for cheap. They retail for 400 bucks, but I got it for 70 bucks. Um, yeah, these things have great range and extremely stable. So I haven't had to touch it once since I got it set up correctly, which was a couple weeks ago. So yeah, um, this is my home theater also hooked up and the Xbox. But I'll go over those and well, I'll go over the home theater in another video. Now back to the um, computer to show how I manage some of these things. So this is a PF Sense. This is what's running on my router. Right? there that box so sir, some of the services that are shown here DHCP uh, DNS um, UPnP that's just uh, the forward ports network time protocol squid is another one I'm going to cover but I'll, I'll cover DNS first so some cool things you can do with DNS is you can redirect like um, certain IPs to or certain host names to other IPs. So I got a list of ad server host names and that are automatically generated and I um, 
redirect those to a local, um, basically a local web server, which is just running on my router as well. All this information is going to be in the link in the description, so I recommend if you are interested in that. So that's the web server. It's just a one by one transparent GIF that's running on my um, thing. It's compiled in C, so it's actually very uh, efficient. Doesn't take much resources. But yeah, I have ads go to that. So let's see on Amazon. Say like there would normally be an ad there because it's one of the blocked websites. It doesn't even show up. It's just that one transparent pixel. So it speeds up things, lowers bandwidth use, and uh, gets ads out of your way. Uh, here's another example. This is YouTube. Um, here's like a popular video that would have an ad on it. So normally they have 15-second um, ads or 30-second ads, some of which you cannot skip. Um, instead, you get a couple seconds, maybe three seconds to five seconds of just loading, and then it actually loads, and you can see it just started right away. Um, so you never really have to deal with ads on YouTube and it actually does save time. Um, yeah, so back to the interface, back to the uh, PFSense interface. So that was uh, basically what I'm, the tricks I'm doing with DNS, which I'll have linked. Um, let's go over Squid. So Squid basically is a proxy and it um, will save uh, local copies of like web images. So if one user goes online, goes to a website, and um, the proxy will download a lot of those images as it's going through, and then when a second user goes online, you save bandwidth because you're not grabbing those images again. You grab it from the local squid proxy. So um, this is just a reporting add-on. So this shows how much of proxies. I believe that that's showing that I've that I've saved 123 gigs of bandwidth this month alone. The month isn't even over. This is for January. So there's other months in this report as well. But yeah, um, I, I actually have the uh, PFSense installed on an SSD so it can grab these squid files faster. It also has 8 gigs of RAM so it can um, get things faster. Some of the RAM is allocated to the most recent cached, uh, cached images. So yeah, that um, you can see that my this usage is slowly filling up. Eventually, it'll be around 90%, whatever I set it to. And these are all just basically cached images and other files that could be cached, like um, HTML and Java and stuff. And then my memory usage is also fairly high, but that's out of 8 gigs, so I still have a lot of extra. That's uh, my memory usage is from Squid and also from Varnish. But Varnish, I'm going to go over in my web server video and um, link. So. Yeah, um, I'll just show one more thing actually. So that was basically the main stuff about PFSense. Now I'll show just the Cisco interface. Um, I'm, I'm going to have in the description some, some tips about configuring this because it wasn't super straightforward. There should normally be a password, but I'm already logged in. Yeah, so this is the Cisco interface. And there's just a bunch of things here. If you click these, it opens up submenus. Um, I'll just go over the menus and submenus in the description on how to get WPA2 set up because um, it's not super easy to set up. It took, took me a little bit of time, but once I got it up, it's been extremely stable. It hasn't gone down since. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, you can just check the, the link in the description and ask me if it's not on there. So yeah, have a nice day.